Hi everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time seeing my face, you just happened to click on my video. I'm so glad you did. My name's Caroline. I mostly film book videos, but I'm also really into fashion, so I like to film some clothing videos, as well as travel vlogs, stay in the life vlogs, that kind of thing. So if that sounds like something you're into, I would love to have you guys here on my channel. Don't forget to hit the red subscribe button below to stick around. Today I'm filming my July wrap up, so I'm going to be talking to you guys about all the books that I read over the previous month. July was a really great reading month. I found a few new favorites that I am excited to share. I had two five star reads, which if you've watched my past two wrap ups, you'll know is super exciting news because I didn't rate any books five stars in May or June. So for some stats, I read eight books total in July. Seven of them I read the physical copy of the book. One of them I listened to on audiobook. For the genre breakdown, I read three romances, two thrillers, one literary fiction, one historical fiction, and one fantasy. There's a few of these books that I feel like can fit into more than one genre. So I'll touch on that when I talk about the actual book. Since I did have some five star reads this month, I'm going to film this wrap up the way that I film the majority of these wrap ups, which is starting with my least favorite and lowest rated book and then work up to talking about my favorite and highest rated book of the month. So my lowest rated and least favorite book of the month is Pretty Girls by Karen Slaughter. I gave this book three stars, which in my eyes is not a bad rating at all. This is by no means a bad book. It was just my least favorite because it had some elements in it that I personally didn't care for. So this book is mainly following the perspectives of these two sisters named Claire and Lydia. And Claire and Lydia live very different lifestyles. Claire married into a good bit of money, so she lives in a very nice house. She wears expensive designer clothes and her friends are like her country club tennis friends. Whereas Lydia is dating an ex-con, she herself was arrested so she kind of struggles to find a job and she's really scraping by in terms of her financial situation. Lydia and Claire also have another sister who went missing when they were younger and then in present day there is another young teenage girl who went missing so we're kind of trying to figure out if these two disappearances are connected in any way and a lot of crazy stuff happens in between. So this book is mostly a thriller, but I would say there are some horror elements to it. I'm the kind of person where I feel like nothing shocks me and I don't get grossed out easily. I kind of feel like I've seen it all, but there were things in this book that even I was like, oh my God, that is very gruesome. So definitely check the trigger warnings if you're interested in reading this book. For me, I feel like this book read more like a true crime book instead of a fictional thriller, which is one of the reasons I didn't love it. This book did the same thing that No Exit by Taylor Adams did that I really didn't care for, where we find out this big reveal or twist kind of halfway through, and then the remainder of the book after that is just kind of like this action-packed adventure reinforcing that twist and like the aftermath of that. I don't know, I just prefer more twists and turns in my thrillers. I really like a psychological thriller where I'm thinking one thing the majority of the book and then towards the end, I find out I was completely wrong about something and like my brain is just tricked. Whereas this is more like action-y like I said and a very linear plot line that makes sense. It just wasn't my cup of tea, but I know I'm the outlier here because I got this book rec from Haley Hughes, my favorite booktuber ever, and this is her favorite thriller ever. So I was kind of hopeful that this might be a five star read for me, unfortunately. It just wasn't, again, not because it was a bad book by any means, it just had elements that aren't my thing in thrillers or what I like to read about. Also, this book is extremely long and I felt like it was unnecessarily long. I have the short and like fat and chunky version of this book, but even the regular size novel is like 680 something pages. My copy is like 575 pages, so very, very long book. I feel like it got super repetitive. I would kind of zone out at some parts and then go back and reread what I missed. And I was like, oh, I didn't really miss anything. It's just saying more of the same. But I think that's just a personal preference because I know a lot of people love Karen Slaughter. I personally didn't gel with the writing 100%, but 
I don't know, maybe one day in the future I will try Karen Slaughter out again. My next favorite book that I also gave three stars to is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. I've heard so many mixed things about this book, but I've heard that whether you like it or not, the twist just hits and it's so crazy. So I was really craving a book with a good twist and that's why I picked this one up. And this one, we're following this very rich family who owns their own private island, kind of in the Martha's Vineyard area off the coast of Massachusetts. Basically, one day there was this accident and our main character, Katie, she passed out during the accident and when she wakes up, she has some amnesia, she can't remember what happened, and she's trying to piece together what happened the night of the accident, and none of her family will tell her what really went down. So we're trying to figure that out as the reader as well. So again, gave this book three stars. I don't think it was a bad book, objectively, but I didn't love it. Mostly the writing, I felt like the writing was good, but it was just extremely vague and I understand that it needed to be vague because it kind of reinforces the fact that our main character has some memory loss and we're trying to figure out what's going on alongside her. But because of that, I really never was gripped by the plot or sucked into the story and I never really connected or cared about any of the characters. Also, the twist. <laughs> it was so disappointing. I halfway guessed the twist before it happened and I'm like, there's no way this twist is supposed to be crazy and shocking. If this is what it is, I'm going to be disappointed. And I was disappointed. I feel like the twist was kind of a cop out. I don't know. I can see where some people would like it. And if you aren't picking up on the little clues, then it will be quite a shock for some. But for me, I guessed it. And the whole reason I was looking forward to this book was because of the twist. So I'm not proud of the fact that I guessed it. I really wanted to be taken by surprise. So overall, this book was just so-so. There were things I liked about it. I liked the rich, bougie family vibes, but there were also things in it that I did not care for. Okay, next book I'm gonna talk about was a library book that I had to return already, so I don't have the physical copy on me, but that is Funny You Should Ask by Alyssa Sussman. I gave this book three and a half stars. If you are familiar with the book Social Media World, I'm sure you've seen this book somewhere. It has been blowing up lately and I had to know what all the hype was about and I thought the plot sounded so interesting. It is basically about this reporter who gets assigned to interview this actor who is playing the new James Bond. The public opinion is not in his favor. People think he is not going to make a great James Bond and think they should have cast someone else for the role. So our main character, the reporter, is trying to write an article to sway the public opinion and convince everyone that he will in fact be a great James Bond. So I thought that sounded so super interesting, but ultimately the plot ended up feeling a little too far-fetched for me. Basically, I didn't know that this actor she's interviewing was like her celebrity crush so the idea of like meeting your celebrity crush in person and then falling in love with them it sounds amazing but it's just not really likely to happen so it was hard for me to get swept up into the story and really believe it i wasn't buying it 100 percent, and i wasn't fully connecting to the characters but overall i did enjoy my time reading it i thought it was fun in the moment just a little forgettable afterwards. I liked the format that the story was told in. We do get a then and now timeline, which is my favorite thing ever. There's also some fictional news articles sprinkled throughout. We get some articles written by our main character, the reporter, as well as just some like articles about this actor from other news outlets. So we see all these different perspectives in that way, which I enjoyed. But again, just a little too far-fetched and a little bit forgettable. This is one that I don't think quite lives up to the hype. I don't think you need to rush out and buy this one by any means, but I think it's worth reading eventually. The next book I listened to on audiobook, and that is The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho and translated by Alan R. Clark. I ended up giving this book 3.75 stars. This book is about a shepherd boy who has this recurring dream that he uncovers some treasure. So it's pretty much just about his journey trying to find where this treasure is and the relationships he makes with different people in his quest to find this treasure along the way. This book very much reads like a fable with a lot of great life lessons sprinkled throughout. 
The first half of this book I was absolutely loving. I love the audiobook, I love the narrator. He has a very like proper British accent that feels very nostalgic and just the perfect narrating voice. I really, really enjoyed it. So the first half for me was five stars. I was loving it. I was loving the setting. I was loving our main character going on this journey. I was so excited to find out what was gonna happen while he was trying to find his treasure. But then halfway through, the story kind of stalled for me. I got a little bit bored and I don't love where they ended up taking the story. It was fine and it ended up wrapping up well and nicely and it was like a great little life lesson in the end. But I kind of had to do like an average rating with my first 50% of the book being five stars and I felt like the last 50% was more like a two star. So I settled on a 3.75 stars for this book. But it was a very short, quick, easy read as well. The audiobook was only like four hours long, so I would recommend listening to it. I don't regret reading it at all. The next book I'm so excited to have finally read, that is It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey. I gave this book four stars. So this book is following our main character, Piper Bellinger. She is an influencer and a socialite. Everything in her life has kind of come easy to her. And one day she ends up throwing this crazy big party. The cops get involved, they bust it up. So Piper ends up going to jail and getting arrested. So her stepfather is very fed up with Piper's partying ways and her lifestyle. He feels like she really needs to learn the value of hard work. So in an effort to teach her a lesson, he sends her away from LA to this small fishing village in Washington where her father, who has passed away actually is from and where he grew up and it's quite the culture shock for Piper but she ends up meeting this fisherman who is pretty grumpy named Brendan and they strike up a romance from there. I thought this one was so so cute. I totally see the hype. The reason I didn't rate it higher is because the tropes in this one aren't my fave. I don't really love grumpy sunshine or enemies to lovers but I thought this one did it well. The other thing that bothered me was the dialogue in some parts, especially during the like romantic or spicy scenes I thought was super cringy. But besides that, I did think it was really, really cute. Definitely worth reading. A fun summer romance. And I definitely will be picking up the sequel to this, which is kind of like, I guess, the companion novel, the duology following Piper's sister, Hannah. So... I recommend it. It's cute. My next favorite book was Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I gave this book 4.25 stars. So if you are familiar with TJR's other popular books, Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six, this book also takes place in that same world with some character crossover. You don't have to read the other two books before reading this one, but I think it's a good idea too because you see Mick Reba show up again, who was in Evelyn Hugo and Daisy Jones and the Six. So this book flips timelines between the 1960s where Mick Reba is meeting and falling in love with June and how they get married and have their children. And then in the 80s, which is the present day timeline for the story, we are following the Reva siblings, which there are four of them, and they are throwing their famous end of the summer annual party that they have every year in Malibu. So the summer vibes in this one are great. They're all surfers as well. So we get a lot of scenes that take place by the water on the beach, and we see a whole bunch of drama unfold over the course of the night while this party is taking place. So I did enjoy my time reading this one. I found that with all TJR books I've read, it takes me like 80 to 100 pages to get into it. And then I finally do, but it just takes me a while to get into her books for some reason. But I would say out of all the books I have read by her so far, I connected to the characters the most in this one. I really loved the sibling dynamics in this, the found family aspects. I really enjoyed the party scenes when we're getting all these different perspectives from these famous people attending this party. I was hoping that the party would be slightly more glamorous and crazy. I just wanted more from those scenes and the scenes flipping back to Mick and June in the 60s were kind of slow to start. That's kind of what made the story for me harder to get into, but Overall, I really liked the characters, enjoyed my time reading this one. And then I had two five-star reads. I do think there's one I liked slightly more than the other, but I feel pretty confident in saying that I think these two are gonna make my top 10 list by the end of the year. So the first one I wanna talk about is 
Every Summer After by Carly Fortune. This was an easy five stars. This book has been blowing up. I'm sure you've seen it everywhere and it's getting so much hype and I think deservedly so. I think this one definitely lives up to all the buzz. So this one is told in that same style that I absolutely love. We get a past and present timeline following Percy and Sam. They are childhood friends that grow into lovers. You find out that something happened 12 years ago that tore them apart and they haven't spoken since. And then in present day, they are trying to rekindle their connection and work through what happened. And in the end, it is revealed why they stopped talking. So I know everyone says it, but this book was a lot like Love and Other Words, but this book gave me everything that I wanted from Love and Other Words, but didn't get. So in Love and Other Words, I hated the reveal, the reason why they stopped talking for so long. And I thought the aftermath and the resolution from that was not well done at all. This book, I thought the reveal was very well done. I totally understood where the characters were coming from on both sides and I thought the aftermath was done really well. I really liked the conclusion of this book and I just enjoyed my time reading it throughout. I just thought it was so, so cute. Childhood Friends to Lovers is definitely, definitely one of my favorite tropes ever. I'm just obsessed. I thought this was so cute. The perfect summer romance. This gave me like everything I wanted. I had zero complaints just like one of the most perfect books I've read this year. And then my favorite book that I read this month that I also gave five stars to is Where the Crawdads Sing by Delia Owens. This book I think is mostly a literary fiction and coming of age story, but there's also elements and subplots of mystery as well as romance in here. And I felt like Delia Owens blended all of those genres together so, so well. So this book takes place in the 1950s and 1960s along the North Carolina coast in the marsh. So we get two timelines in this book. One is following Kaya as she grows up. She was completely abandoned and left alone by her entire family. So she's had to learn how to survive by herself, how to make money, how to eat, how to keep up with her little shack that she lives in. And it's really a coming of age story following Kaya and her life. And then in the other timeline, there has been a murder in this town where the golden boy of the town named Chase, he's the star quarterback, everyone adores him, he is found dead. So they're trying to figure out who murdered Chase, if he was murdered at all, it could have been an accident, there are lots of speculations going on. So eventually these two timelines converge, the one where Chase was murdered and Kaya growing up, I thought it was so, so well done. I've heard a lot of mixed reviews about this book lately, so I was kind of wary of it being a little bit boring, a little bit slow. I wasn't sure if I would like it or not. This book is definitely very slow paced, but this is one of those books where I feel like every single word was necessary to building the plot and developing the characters. I felt like no page in this book was wasted. Everything was so relevant to the story. I don't think it was ever repetitive or boring, but it is definitely slow paced, so I can see where it would not be for everyone. Yeah, this book gripped me by like chapter three and I fully loved it. I thought it was well written, so well done. This book keeps you guessing until the very, very end. Literally the last page of the book is when you find out what actually happened, but it's still is concluded really well. It doesn't feel rushed at all and I really liked how the story ended up going. I just thought learning about Kaya and her life and her struggles, it was really relatable even though Kaya is so different to myself. I saw myself in her in terms of like feeling alone, feeling like an outsider. The message of this book was really beautiful and again I love how the genres of mystery and romance all weaved into this as well as seeing Kaya grow up and her character development. Uh, I thought it was beautiful. I think there's some kind of unspoken rule if Daisy Edgar Jones is in the adaptation of a book that I'm gonna just have to love it because obsessed with normal people, obsessed with this. She was in both adaptations. I thought the film adaptation of this book was really, really well done. I thought they did the best they could with it. It's really hard to capture all the magic and all the spark that I felt reading this book in like a two and a half hour movie when it takes like 10 to 12 hours to read a book on average. It's just kind of something hard to do, but I feel like they did the best with what they could. And 
I liked it. I enjoyed both, but the book is definitely so much better in my opinion. Okay guys, those are all the eight books I read in July. So that is going to conclude this wrap up. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. I hope you'll stick around by hitting subscribe down below. Let me know if you've read any of these books and let me know your thoughts on them or if you're planning to read any of them down below in the comments. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye guys. Thank you.